the mark is, is, is a sense, it's crudest, it's where I literally find something I'm looking at turning into a physical um, motion across the surface of the paper. So I'm marking out the space, if you like. So the mark is a, it doesn't actually kind of exist as a mark out there because I might see a, the faintest of directions and still mark it quite strongly. So the mark overemphasizes in some ways the direction of the field of the area. The questions I'm asking myself are, do I like just marks? Do the marks do enough? Are they too subconscious or too um, expressive or do they denote, what do they denote? Are they denoting some sort of spatial thing? So what I want in all my drawings, I'm always looking for a point where the marks do more than just simply mark out territory, but they start to really create a tension that feeds the rest of the drawing. And I don't know where that's going to be until it suddenly appears to me. I don't know what I, I don't know quite why I make these little I, I have a tendency to sort of go to make a mark and then sort of, and then put it up to something I, I, don't, I don't I'm basically I don't know what I'm exactly doing I think I'm trying to continually subdivide the rectangle perhaps but then break it down at the same time I'm sort of caught between this tension of wanting to think about imagery uh, as a sort of independent surf independent thing as an image and then tr the kind of if you like the process which takes you to the image or is really critical for finding the image so a process which kind of takes you on its own kind of course so there is a period of discomfort where, where you kind of like feel that your initial kind of reason for doing it or hope it will work out in a certain way suddenly suddenly it doesn't work anymore and you have to kind of shift it into new territory and uh, thinking about how that works in terms of relationship with other people I think I've experienced that particularly in friendships um, sometimes in relationships I've experienced it more of a kind of irretrievable breakdown because I don't know how to always find my way back like the fact that when you start to work on something you, something that seems to be quite important suddenly just dissolves into nothing. The surface of the paper closer to the window is more exposing of the line this is more diffuse so I'm actually finding like I'm drawing into into a kind of into a fog or into a cloud um, and I'm playing around with the edge of the I'm working along the edge of the um, frame of the window as a kind of perhaps trying to establish some some structural edge which I can work with against the kind of more flowing smudgy area. At the moment I'm looking uh, as I shifted to the right hand side of the drawing I'm very conscious of the vertical edge of the window and the space beyond because vertical do I a question I want to ask myself is do I do I record every aspect of the shift I'm making across the paper with what I'm looking at, or do I make the do I make the drawing coherent? So my natural instinct here is to think here's a vertical um, juncture, uh, and the kind of delight of the reflective surfaces. I've always been interested in the idea that the surface beams back something, um, and it kind of causes this kind of fantastic rush of brightness um, and also kind of it's got a bodily quality to it so it could be like a nude almost or a um, part of a body or because it's there's no because I'm interested in, in not necessarily look at the horizon line which immediately focused it as a kind of something actually kind of disappearing into space without the horizon line it becomes about just the physicality of what's in front of your eye and then 
as a as a space without any particular focal point you're you're able to go through it in any way you want you can decide on your course of action deciding well i'll go up that route instead of that route no one's going to tell me that it should be that way you know you can go down that route oh that's interesting now i'll stop there or suddenly into a clearing that that has a sense of you know one moment you've been slightly trapped in the space and then suddenly it opens up into a clearing um, I, I suppose it's a non-space in the sense that you know if people were standing here normally most people who are standing here would be looking at a distant view so the horizon line which is very captivating very beautiful and interesting and varied and you, your eye would just cast through this so in some ways it's a non-space, but it isn't the kind of non-space like a, an empty car park in, in the edge of Longford. But I must admit, I'm actually, when I'm actually drawing, I'm not thinking landscape. I'm not thinking this is a landscape. All I'm thinking of is this is the surface I'm looking at. But there's, a, there's enough reflection and surface interference marks. Old spider's web. Surfaces things on the surface which remind me I'm actually not out there so I'm interested in kind of slightly disengaging simultaneously as engaging with the, um, the space beyond just trying to think about correspondences with memory of landscape or memory of spaces and I just when I was just drawing this area here I was thinking of um, something of the memory of um, living in Italy in the late 80s, 89, 90. The, the um, cottage we were renting was on a slope with a kind of um, rough, rough track to the, left of the, to the left of the house, which went up beyond. And I can remember the feeling of, of um, walking away from the house, perhaps walking away from uh, domestic interactions and responsibilities and, um, and just feeling that the pull of the hill. I don't think I did a lot of drawings immediately around the house, but I remember at least that feeling of being pulled up into space, something like on, on an ascendant. So these different ideas of almost being enclosed and then opened out, the sort of contracting and expanding of things interests me.